What is up guys, welcome back to Tanoa. Today I am going to take a look at some of the stuff that I missed in my preview slash review video last week. The first thing is going to be sweet new Jeep. Handles very nicely, at least on the runway. Uh, you can get some sweet fish tails. That's about it. It's just Jeep. Goes off-road, uh, sort of like the off-road truck. Still handles pretty well off-road. But the main thing I'm going to look at today is this bad boy, the MQ-11 or the MQ-12 helicopter UAV drone. So let's take a look at it first. It's got six ATGMs, it's got a laser designator, and it's got 24 rockets. Now, the one thing I have not been able to figure out with it is how to get it to fire its rockets on its own. I absolutely cannot figure out how to do that. So if you know how to get this thing to fire its rockets by itself, post it up in the comments. Uh, but what I will do is I will fire its ATGMs. Uh, we got some sweet targets out there. And I'll fire the ATGMs both remotely and manually, so I'll use the laser designator that I have, and you'll see how the UAV works. And I'll show you a little bit of how to get the UAV to move around. And then I'll move up to that hilltop, and there's some more targets on an island further out to the southwest. So first things first, let's get it up in the air. So open up your UAV terminal, connect to UAV. And for those of you who don't know how to use the UAVs, you use control and left click to move the UAVs around. And that gets him to go. Alright, and actually I did not want him to move that far out, so open terminal, right click, cancel waypoint. Let's see. I don't know where he's going, but he's going fast. Alright, so... Let's bring him back over here, and then I'll have him stage at the end of the runway, facing down. So he's going to go back out there, and then he's going to turn around. So one thing you need to remember when using UAVs uh, in Arma, especially this one, is they'll end in the direction that you last had them facing. So if I told him to just fly to the end of the runway and stop, he would have flown to the end of the runway and stopped facing to the northeast up there. So I told him to fly out there and then turn around and come back so he should be facing up the runway. So now we wait. And he should stop. So there are two ways to fire the UAV, uh, the ATGMs. The first is simply bring up your laser designator and if there's a UAV in the area, Paint your target. He is stopped, right? Yep, he stopped. Paint your target. Count to about five. About five. And bam, he fires by himself and it hits whatever you're aiming at. Now, make sure that as soon as your target explodes, as soon as your target gets hit, you turn the laser off because he will continue firing until all out and as you can see one two three four five he fired his first ATGM now the second way to fire off of UAV is to take UAV turret controls when you're already connected and this particular UAV has two modes it has uh, wire guided or laser guided so see if I can see if I can hit this target we might be a little bit close so fire and then bring it down I think I hit it did I hit it I hit the ground right in front of it definitely took out some of its tires and the second is lock on so you press your lock on button get a tone fire so let's move the UAV all right I'll uh I'll take manual control so you can actually fly your UAVs around. Now this thing, the camera on it is zoomed in and I don't really understand why and there's no way to zoom it out but it's really hard to control uh, 
in first person because of the fact that the camera is zoomed in. So I've got to fly it in third person. And it handles it handles very nicely. It's uh, it's very very agile, uh, and you don't have to worry about anyone inside dying because there's no one inside. But get it over here, and we'll get it staged where I want it. We've got some more targets over on that island. Now, right now, you see that it has crosshairs on. I don't know how the crosshairs come on because sometimes I have the crosshairs and sometimes I don't. But I'll go over why that's important in a little bit. So we can go back to the turret controls. And you see we've got targets over there. Tank, couple of APCs. And once it's locked on, it's not fire following your laser anymore. So target's gone. So if you're not locked on to something, it will follow your laser. Let's see if I can make this do some loops. Yep, you can see it. You can see it moving right there at the last second when I finally re-zeroed. And that's it. Pretty solid uh, as far as UAVs go because you can set this one wherever you want it and it'll stay there. You don't have to worry like the other, uh, the drones, the uh, airplane drones, they have to continuously move and those are kind of hard to control and get them to line up your shots. So this thing is really freaking cool. All right, now let's see if I take controls. All right, I still have crosshairs. Now, I, one thing I cannot do, and I think I already went over this, is I cannot figure out how to get the drone to fire its rockets autonomously at targets. Uh, regardless of what I do, I've sent it in. Uh, I've spent Basically, I've spent two hours trying to figure out how to get it to fire its rockets, and it just won't do it. So, when the crosshairs are on, I can manually fire the rockets. So, let's see if I can find a target. All right, there's a target right there. Now let's fly over it. Nope, I gotta take manual control. So crosshairs on, I can actually fire. Now if you go into first person you'll have the crosshairs and the camera is zoomed way in by default and there's no oh I can get it zoomed back out. Ah okay. Now oh, this is so much easier. Alright. Let's see if I can hit some targets now. Oh, I did destroy him. Let's check out the other one. Going too fast. Okay. I just didn't have a zoom out button set up on my joystick, so I didn't think you could zoom out. But now that I know that, that's much easier. So you can take manual control and you can fire the rockets. And they just go more or less a little bit lower than center of your screen, it feels like. So even if you don't have crosshairs, you can still do manual control of the drone. And the drone is not too tough. Uh, it was getting shot at by the minigun earlier. If it gets plinked a few times, it'll probably go down. But like I said, there's no one inside of it. So you don't really have to worry about that too much. And there you go. So this thing is super cool, and it's really fun to use, it's really fun to fly. Alright, so next we're going to take a look at the new CSAT UAV. Uh, it is a standard UAV, nothing, it doesn't do anything that the other UAV, uh, that the other plane UAVs doesn't do. It's got four air-to-ground missiles, so the helicopter is actually more heavily armed. 
uh, because, I mean, the helicopter took out the tank in one shot, so these things aren't going to be doing anything more impressive than that. But let's connect to it. And it is the KH-3 Alpha Fengwang. Uh, turn the lights off, and we'll get it up in the air. So for drones like these, you have to have them at the end of a runway, and just give them a waypoint. And then you watch them take off. Another thing, you can double tap your tab button, and it'll bring up your drone's camera on your screen whenever you have control of a drone. So that's sort of like holding up your UAV terminal while you're moving around. So we are going to take a look from right here on the airfield. We've got some targets set up across the bay. And getting the plane UAVs set up on target is a little bit more difficult than the helicopter because they don't just hover. So you've got to set up their shots. So you go in and let's see, the UAV is down there and it'll get to that waypoint and it'll just fly around in circles. But what I want to do is I want to send it back over to here so that I can use it to designate those targets. Now, if those targets actually had tar uh, if those targets actually had guys inside of them, the UAV would automatically detect and destroy them. But for now, I'm going to give the UAV, let's actually cancel the waypoint there and we'll put the waypoint beyond it and then we'll have him loop around a couple times. I really wish you could give UAVs cycle waypoints. So he's already lined up and these guys will fire from a really long way off. So let's go ahead and back out of here and laze one of these targets. And now we wait. So you, you have to be patient with the plane UAVs because, like I said, you have to set them up. But they will fire from really far away. And you got to be paying attention because as soon as that missile hits, you have to turn the laser off. There you go. Laser off. Now, laser back on, because I think he's still pretty far out. Actually, I'm hearing him launch, so maybe not. Oops, I turned the laser off too soon. Okay, that tank did go catastrophic. All right, laser off. I'll check his position. Okay, yeah, he was too far ahead. So I accidentally turned the laser off when I heard it launch instead of when I saw it impact, so I don't know where that second missile went. But now he's continuing on his waypoints and he'll hit let's see the terminal he'll hit that waypoint and then he'll go over here and he'll go back down and we can actually cut out the waypoint that's right here so he'll go down there and then he'll come right back so once again now we have to wait for him to get back in position another thing to remember if you do want the UAVs to be autonomous and engage right click on a waypoint and then set their behavior to open fire engage at will. That way whenever they see a target they can engage, they will. However, keep in mind that a lot of times they'll miss their targets. So it's a better idea to use your laser designator if you have that option. So let's speed up time here a little bit. And as you can see on the right side of the screen, I can see when my UAV starts turning around. If he starts turning around. There we go. Now he's turning. So I'll double check. Make sure. And wait till he is facing back north. And then I will relay my targets. Alright, he's facing back north. Lazes up. And now we wait. And remember, as soon as you see the impact, turn the laser off because he will continuously fire when you have your laser up. Bam. 
Alright, laser off, laser back on. And I can hear him firing that time. Uh, he might have been too close. Because I heard the... Uh, it doesn't look like he should have been too close. Maybe I backed out a little too soon. So, two hits, two misses. But that is a good example of how to use the plane UAVs. So we've checked out the Jeep, we've checked out both the UAVs, and there is one more thing to check out. Alright, so before we go look at that last thing, we'll take a look at the new civilian planes. As you can see, I've suited up to fly these high-speed, very dangerous planes. nice uh, uh, I would say it's low speed but it goes faster than any helicopter that I ever fly that's overall just a pretty cool addition like I said uh, for me I think it'll mostly be used as ambience for any sort of missions well if we ever go to an airport it's nice to have an actual you know non-military plane but for any sort of of drug cartel missions or, or missions against enemies where they would have an airplane like this. Pretty nice interior. I don't know if I'm going to be... Oh yeah, got to do flaps down, flaps down, oh god! Oh god! That would have been smoother, but I was trying to... I took my hand off my joystick and I was trying to get my flaps down on my mouse. I don't have my joystick set up to navigate through that menu. But uh, I did not explode. Good landing. The last thing we're going to take a look at is, of course, the boats. New boats. So we've got our ribs, which are military boats, but they are not equipped with any sort of weaponry. And we will, okay, yeah, it looks like we can fire from the seats, so let's check that out first. And of course, we'll take our trusty concealed 9mm and we'll check it out. So you can fire from the seats. And let's drive it around to driver's seat. Be free! All right, that's definitely not stuck anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye, boat. I barely knew ye. Alright, well, I guess that means we're going to take a look at the ski dudes first. Which one matches my uh, my shirt? This one matches my shirt. So there is a back seat on these things, but prepare to be disappointed. You cannot fire from the back seat on these things. Uh, but they handle ridiculously well. They're super fun to drive. I should probably set up some sort of like obstacle course with jumps and stuff, but they handle very well. They're easy to drive. Easy easy and fun, sort of in the same way. Damn, this thing is still going. Jeez, I might have bumped it a little bit too hard. Alright, let's see if I can stop it without exploding the ski. Oh, wow. There we go. Now the rib does not handle nearly as nicely as the ski do. Let's see what its maximum speed is though. Let's 
So it goes nice and quick if you're trying to get somewhere fast by water, which on this island you are probably going to be doing. And that concludes today's second look at Tanoa. We've caught up on everything that I missed, I hope. And like I said, if you know how to fire those rockets on that helicopter drone autonomously, post it in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching.